Hi, this is Dr. Phil Nguyen with the Botox Buyer's Guide. Today we're going to talk about all the facial areas that we can do Botox on. Mind you, these are rough guidelines as to the number of units that I typically use. Um, I take a number of factors into consideration when I do Botox, including how does that patient look? Are they thin? Are they fat? Uh, how old are they? Uh, how deep are the lines that they have? Uh, do they want to be totally relaxed or do they want more of a nice softening of their lines for a natural look, basically? Uh, and last but not least, what is their budget? Uh, do they have $500 to spend or do they have like $150 to spend? So let's go over briefly the 12 areas that Botox can be used in. Starting from the top, the first area I do Botox in are the horizontal forehead lines that are above the brows. Typically they respond very well to Botox and I'll use anywhere from 6 to 12 units. This is the area that I have to be the most careful with because if you Botox this area, area too strongly, uh, patients will often get a brow droop, meaning that uh, it's the same muscle that lifts the eyebrows and if they can't lift their eyebrows, uh, their eyelids will actually feel heavier. Now this is different than um, the eyelid droop that can sometimes be seen uh, as a complication when we do the glabellar area. The next area we do are the glabellars and typically the glabellars are the ones or the 11s or the 111s that are seen between the eyebrows. Uh, it's a very very strong muscle and I will do anywhere from 12 to 30 units, uh, 12 for younger patients, 20 is probably my average that I do, and 30 units I probably say for men who have really, really strong glabellar lines. After that, the next area would be uh, a little bit of lifting at the edge of the eyebrows here. We can put, we can place two to three units on each side. That will help lift the brows and cause a little bit of this arching that women often like. The crow's feet are next. And crow's feet, I'll do anywhere from 4 to 12 units on each side. The manufacturer, uh, Allergan, recommends 12 units. And when you do 12 units, you get a nice effect and it'll last about 3 to 4 months. Doing less amount of units, like 4 or 8 units, will give a nice softening. Uh, and typically won't last quite as long just because, you know, we smile so much and the crow's feet come back the quickest out of most of the areas that I do. Some patients ask for a tiny bit of Botox, like about one unit right underneath uh, the eyelids here, the lower eyelids. And what this does, is it weakens that muscle because when you smile, a lot of Asians, um, they have this like bunching of the muscles there. It can relax that muscle as well as open up the eyelids a little bit. Um, I sometimes don't like this area just because it weakens the muscle of, that, uh, of the under eye and can sometimes uh, cause or make it easier for the fat pads of the under eye to protrude out. Now, the sixth area that I do it, are the bunny lines. Uh, you know, when we smile, some people scrunch their bunnies and they get these kind of almost vertical bunny lines. And you need a small amount of units, typically about two to three units on each side uh, will help with those bunny lines. The next area below that would be the gummy smile. And Botox is typically done right at where the corner of the nose is and where the nasolabial folds meet. Uh, about two to three units on each side will uh, impair the muscles that lift the mouth or the, the upper lips up when you smile. Uh, it works great for patients that have that gummy smile. The eighth area I do Botox in are the vertical li lip lines. Now, this is the bane of many, many women, especially as they reach over 45. Uh, these lip lines, uh, they're called smoker's lines. You don't have to smoke to get them, but many women have them, and typically I'll do about four to six units on the vertical lip lines altogether. Now, lip lines 
don't last very long. The the Botox and the lip lines don't last very long because we talk, we eat, uh, and sometimes uh, it can impair your ability to say the R sound or the P or the B sound. Uh, it's not that significant, and many women do that without any impairment in their speech. Uh, but just so you know, that can happen. Now, the ninth area I do Botox is what's called the DAO, which is uh, basically the muscle that pulls down the corners of the mouth and leads to a more prominent marionette line. When you do a little bit of Botox there, anywhere from two to three units on each side, uh, it can relax the muscles that pull the corners of the mouth down so that the mouth actually pulls up. Uh, nice alternative to doing fillers in that area. Uh, if you've got really deep marionette lines, it'll give uh, a slight improvement. What you really need are fillers in that area instead uh, to give a more permanent or a more um, a, a better cosmetic result. Now the 10th area I do Botox in are uh, what's called the masseter muscles and that is and, and those are the muscles that we use to chew foods. A lot of women uh, that are of Asian descent, they typically have very strong masseter muscles and it creates a very uh, square jaw. So women's face is typically a beautiful, a beautiful face typically has a more oval shape to them whereas a square face has a more masculine shape to it um, or a more masculine look to it. So women that have very strong masseter muscles have a very masculine jaw and if we can shrink that muscle uh, they actually look more feminine. So it kind of gives this illusion of a raised higher cheekbone and a slimmer lower jaw. Basically it's that triangle of beauty that we're trying to replicate. Uh, Botox can also be done in the chin area as well. Uh, a lot of women have this horizontal line above their chin and Botox in that area will help. Uh, women also tend to have this dimpling like this orange peel look to their chin that's not very attractive and doing some Botox in there will re relax that muscle so that the orange peeling and the dimpling doesn't occur. And last but not least in the face, um, I often do Botox in the neck bands that go from uh, the bottom of the chin here down the neck. Uh, typically is seen in thinner women, more athletic women uh, that don't have a lot of fat underneath their skin. Botox in those areas can actually uh, impair the ability of the neck bands to look so um, uh, protruding from the neck. Last but not least, the longevity of Botox is dependent upon a few factors. Uh, first off, younger patients, Botox will last longer. They tend to use less units. Um, less units will often soften the lines as opposed to a total relaxation of the, of the muscles. So the patients appear more natural and less frozen. Uh, using less units also means that the Botox will wear out quicker. It will be a shorter duration of action for the Botox. So when you use a full amount of units, it's going to last longer. It will last a full three to four months uh, before you start seeing the lines come back. And last but not least, uh, when you use Dysport instead of Botox, you want to multiply these units by a factor of three. Anyways, thanks for tuning in with us at the Botox Buyer's Guide. We hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.